a little project for me during lockdown two. Uh, it's been done by many other people before uh, and so I have looked at other YouTube videos. Let's say thank you to the YouTube community for sharing their knowledge and expertise in many of these matters. It really is helpful for those of us who uh, are looking uh, at ways of solving a particular problem. And what I have here, I'm not quite sure if you can see it, is uh, a small watchmaker's lathe. And I'll change the camera position and say a bit more about that. So that's my hand and that's the watchmaker's lathe. So quite a compact little lathe and that's a Singer's sewing machine motor and a five millimeter uh, round belt that drives it. Uh, the thing for me was I didn't feel as though I had any variable speed control. Uh, the Singer motor either came in or went out as I operated the foot pedal. That's me operating the foot pedal down there. However, what I previously got, maybe for my Emco lathes, were a couple of components, not two. Uh, one of these was a 24 volt, 120 watt scooter motor. Uh, that came uh, with uh, spade connectors fitted onto it and a toothed, uh, a pulley for a toothed belt on the shaft. I've tried removing that uh, with a reasonable bit of force and it seems to be glued or seized on there. There is a little flat on the shaft. Um, I'm not quite sure how that is attached. There isn't a grub screw in it or anything like that to undo. I do have a pulley puller if I really want to take that off. Next to that, um, I, well, I think they're all made in China. Um, because there's no labelling on it and I've not gone back to it, I can't see what it is, but it is a 12 to 40 volt, something like that. Please don't quote me. Look, it's got six power transistors on there or whatever they are. Uh, voltage in, motor out. Uh, and that's labelled on there to show you where those connect. Uh, variable speed drive with off on the switch. Uh, so that's what it is. And that'll be a reasonable number of amps. You can tell by the size of the heat sinks and everything. Uh, I don't know what current that would be. I can't remember. So I might well have gone for 10 amps, uh, 8 to 36 volts voltage range that you can use with it, or it might be 48 volts, who knows. You'll see lots of them. What you're looking for is something which will handle at least your 24 volts for your 24 volt motor. You might use a 12 volt motor and 120 watts two or three times the current draw that would be half an amp wouldn't it uh, so a few amps current draw on that a plastic box that that fits into nicely don't ask me where the plastic box came from either you know all i've done to plastic box is notch it to take the uh, control that fits in nicely and lands up at the halfway point in the plastic box and the plastic box just clips together around it and the other thing and i do know where this come, came from it's a 150 watt 24 volt power supply well 150 watts is just a little bit of headroom over the 120 watts of the motor not a lot uh you know it would be nice to have a little bit a 200 watts would be better uh, than that and I did put where I got it from so I might as well pass it on to you uh, and that's from Speed Star Unit Hurst Street Birmingham right so they're probably just an importer of Chinese things or it might be that they do LED lighting for shops or whatever they do but again it's this classic uh, power supplies that you see lots of uh, in that form so those are the things and that's the complete I think that's all we need uh, some people and um, do like this has got an off position uh, 
do like to have uh, a separate stop start switch on it as well uh, and my thoughts at the moment were to wire this up uh, through a cable with a switch on the mains input side to that so if i get this posted up before i do anything else comments please on the addition of a on off or stop start switch for the lathe other than having to turn the potentiometer to zero and then click it off each time when uh, stopping the lathe so you can have it set at a speed that you're using and have an on off switch um, one way is an inline flex carried switch such as i've got in the light here uh, which would at a pinch work uh, for the size of this object here so that's it that's the project the uh, everything screw those are screw terminals on there those are screw terminals on there so everything's fairly easy to put together casing is perhaps the hardest bit of that aspect of it up to there boxing things in and making sure that your mains input supply is well secured and well protected the next part is mounting of your motor i already know how i would like to do that uh, and so there's the mounting of the motor to consider uh, and then it's the drive to the lathe uh, now because it's a variable speed thing here uh, you could consider just direct from the motor to the lathe which is what was on this one anyway uh, what I like about the Emco lathes uh, is that the counter shaft or lathe shaft is virtually built into the end of the lathe. So on the end of the lathe, you've got your pulley and belt system uh, and then your motor. Uh, and the first pulley goes to an intermediate pulley system and then from the intermediate pulley system to the end of the um, headstock spindle. Uh, and then that gives you the functionality of your counter shaft or your lathe shaft all within the uh, headstock area of the lathe rather than having something further back which adds to the real estate or the uh, space needed for the parts of your lathe. Uh, but initially I thought to get it running I'll just put this in with no intermediate pulleys uh, no counter shaft or lay shaft or whichever you prepare, prefer to, to call that. Uh, and then if I want to add one later, uh, consider how best to do that. Everything about making the brackets is fairly straightforward, except that the largest hole I could make in my aluminium without resorting to milling it. And I couldn't find my um, boring tool. Boring tool somewhere I could have put into a mill. Anyway, then I remembered I had a tank cutter, which I've never used before. And I thought, good, that's what it's designed for, cutting holes. It can also, according to its instructions, be used for making washers. It was quite expensive at 19 and sixpence, 19 shillings and sixpence when it was uh, new. Uh, but there we go. It has been used by the look of it. Uh, but there we go. Well, I didn't think I would ever be using my tank cutter. Well, I never didn't know. But it was a useful tool to have. And I'm happy to say that I think it has come into its own. Um, but I'll tell you once I've got the hole actually cut. Because it's going to be a slow process. The shape of the blade means that it removes rather a lot of material. Uh, which means that it gets to be quite hard work as you get deeper into it because you're really cutting, uh, I don't know, four millimetres wide there, nearly a quarter of an inch, uh, which is uh, quite a swathe of material to be cutting out using a tank cutter to cut the hole. End of progress for today. Um, so... This here is a, a 
I cut off from a piece of angle aluminium uh, four holes in it three for the mounting screws uh, M4 I think they are fairly short uh, the shaft goes through there the larger hole on this side I was able to cut with um, actually it's like a countersink mill but I have a stepped bit and a cone bit all of which uh, go up to this size as a maximum size uh, but uh, that's gone through quite cleanly on that side on the other side you saw me using the tank cutter uh, and that's uh, cut that hole that will cut up to a five inch hole apparently with a hand brace in a hand brace uh, and it's one way of cutting a hole like that there are presumably lots of other ways uh, but that, what that means is I can provide some support to the other end of the motor to give it a bit of rigidity if that was clamped down tightly uh, it wouldn't need that other support you can just clamp that I think that would be perfectly adequate for it most of these motors are just mounted on the front face uh, so that's the end of the video uh, sorry about the varying sound levels I'm not sure what's wrong with the mic, the camera on my, not the camera, the microphone on my phone, not picking it up clearly depending on where it's pointing. I've now speaking up a little so you hear me. Uh, you've seen it. I hope that doesn't detract from the utility of it. Uh, just a minor thing. I was doing my current calculations wrongly. Uh, of course, it spells it out on here. Uh, DC output 24 volts 6.3 amps so uh, that does tell us that when I was buying these um, then this is going to be as I say as far as I can remember a nice round figure a 10 amp uh, controller variable speed is what I'm using it for but variable output controller for driving something like a DC motor. Uh, operates over quite a wide voltage range, uh, but uh, and that's a 120 watt motor on there. So we'll need that current. Right, end of that for now, because I'm going to be involved in other things, particularly a bit of lockdown exercise tomorrow. Uh, and then I'll come back to this and uh, consider changing the pulley or not that I would like comment on because I do know from another lathe that I motorized that if you hook the belt over this pulley it runs perfectly well you like as long as you line it up well it will run perfectly well from that stepped pulley it doesn't seem to uh, show any detriment at all where it's gripping on the teeth here rather than on the sides of the uh, round belt as the v-notch does because on the motor on the singer sewing machine motor uh, it's rounded in the base so that it has plenty of grip on the belt uh, but i have in fact ordered a pulley which may be of a reasonable size uh, in order to operate this let me know what you think, please. Your comments are always welcome, very welcome.